All right, guys, so now what we need to do is, first things first, actually make the form so the user has, you know, something to click on. So in my details view, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and get rid of all this because I'm not gonna make this a list item anymore. I'm actually gonna make them form inputs. So I'll keep this all the same, all this red Taylor Swift and then the logo, I think that'll be, you know, pretty cool to have still. So before we even have the form section, what you should always do is you should include a section for an error message. So an error message is gonna pop up whenever uh, the user tries to do something that isn't valid. Like maybe you were having them sign up for your web page and they forgot to input a username. Or maybe they tried to make a password that was only two characters long, so you would wanna put a little prompt at the top of the form back, hey, you need to actually, you know, make a password that's at least like eight characters or something. So it's actually really simple to do. Go ahead and make an if, and you can actually name this variable anything you want, but I'm just gonna say if error message, because later on whenever we're handling this form, usually we're just gonna wanna say, okay, do something to the database, redirect them to this page, no problem. But if something bad does happen, then we can redirect them to this page and then we're gonna actually store an error message in here in this variable and we'll set it equal to like, hey, use a longer password or you know whatever uh, we wanna tell them. So just make a conditional right in there and you can style this however you want. I'm just gonna make something bold real quick. So strong and I'll just say error message. So hopefully this will not exist there won't be any error messages and this will not even appear, but if it does, then they're gonna have a little bold message at the top that says, hey, you did something wrong. All right, so now we wanna end if, all right, so that's all we need to do. And later on, whenever I set this, you guys are gonna easily see what I'm talking about. Let me clean this up. I like being able to scroll for some reason. Ooh, feel so free, all right. So now we just need to go ahead and make a form. And all right, let's build this step by step. So what is the action of the form? The action is what URL you want to send this data to. And of course, we just want to send it to this right here. But remember, instead of just hard coding this, we have that cool shortcut. So back in here, all right, let me just copy this because I'm too lazy to type it out. And all right, so the action for this is music favorite. So that's the URL pattern. We can go ahead and pass in the album ID as well because we also need to pass in the song ID, but for the song ID, we're gonna be getting it from these inputs. So there you go. Now, another thing, Another attribute that we want to add is the method. So the method of this is going to be post. Most of your forums, of course, are going to be post. I assume that you guys already know about getting post. So there you go. Now, one other thing that's kind of weird with Django is it always is a good idea to have a CSRF token. And I'm going to talk to you guys about um, security and the best security practices with Django in a whole nother tutorial. But if you guys just want to look at it a little bit, look up cross-site request forgery and it's a pretty cool topic. So CSRF token. And usually whenever you're making websites, this is a pain in the butt to add. But the awesome thing about Django is whenever you want to use it in Django, you just add that and Django takes care of everything behind the scenes. Pretty cool. All right. So we have a form right there. So now what we want to do is we want to list through this album and just loop through every song and make that a choice. And we already did that before, so remember that was for song in album dot song set dot all. And let me just go ahead and end my four. End four, all right. So we're gonna loop through all of the songs and for each one, what do we wanna do? Well, we need two things, an input button, and that's gonna be the radio button that they click, and also a label. And the label is just gonna be the title of each song so the user knows what the heck option they're selecting. So let's go ahead and do our input first. So 
So again, I'm just using a radio button. You can use a checkbox if you want, but whatever. So of course the type of this equals radio. Now the ID is pretty much just for your HTML. So for the first one, it's just gonna be song one and then song two and then song three. So we really don't use it in code, but whenever we have labels, uh, we pretty much give it the same ID. So that way it knows that this input or this radio button is for that label. So you guys are gonna see later on whenever we run the final site, but there you go. So I'm just gonna write song and then for loop counter. So again, this is gonna get auto incremented each time it prints out a song. So one, two, three, four, five, and that's already built in. We don't have to do anything weird with that. Now after this, just set name equal to song and value equal to song ID. So let me scroll so you guys can see. So again, later on, whenever we actually pass this data, all of the form data to the views function so we can actually handle it, this is gonna be the name or just the variable's name, and then this is gonna be the song ID. So we'll pretty much say, get the ID of whatever song they selected. Let's say that this one was 20, and then it's gonna look through the database and then do its thing. All right. Holy crap, what's going on here? I have my font way bumped up for, uh, you know, just so I can, so just so it looks better on YouTube and it's kind of, hard whenever I'm programming. I never program with my font this big, so that's why it's like kind of freaking me out. All right, so now let's just go ahead and make a nice little pretty label for the user. So for the label, the first thing you write is this, for, and this attribute is the exact same as this. So for song one, song two, yada, yada, whatever. So again, this is mostly just for display and what do we want to display in the label? Well, let me just go ahead and display the song title. I really don't care about the uh, file type. I don't think the user is gonna care about that either. So I'll just write song dot song title. Now, another thing that I'm gonna do is this. How does the user know that their song is favorited? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and find some star icon online and we'll say that if a particular song is favorited then right where this is on the right hand side just go ahead and plop that star logo so whatever favorites they have it's gonna have a nice yellow star right next to it so how do we add that logic well it's pretty simple actually we can go ahead and copy this alright so delete this and instead of checking for if error message we can say if song is favorite. So if the song is the favorite, then what do we want to happen? Well, let me just pause the video and find some image. All right. So I actually just made one real quick. All right. So if this song is their favorite, then what we're going to do is we're just going to plop up this image and I'll show you guys what this is. I don't know if you guys can even see that. So it's only a little star, so that's why it looks all fuzzy. 16 by 16, but this is going to appear right next to the song. Looking good. All right, mate. Looking sweet. And actually, after this label, I'm going to add a line break. And that way, every song is going to appear on a new line. So they do right now because they're list items, and they do that by default. But to ensure that it does that with form labels, just going to add that line break. Now the last thing that we need to do is we actually need to add a submit button because if we just run it right now, then it's just going to be a bunch of uh, radio button options and the user can select one, but they can't submit it. So I'll just say input, let me bump this in. So input the type equals submit and the value and the value is just what text you want to appear on the button. I'll just say favorite. It has no effect on your program whatsoever. So there you go.